Ever since COVID hit in early 2020, brick and mortar stores have seen significantly less traffic, which is why it is so strange that in early 2021, the stock price of a brick and mortar game store has risen by almost 500%. And then throw into the mix that this was actually all caused by a subreddit gone crazy? Well, that's certainly an interesting story. So in this video, we're going to discuss how Reddit broke the stock market, clashed with hedge funds, and what will happen next. So if that sounds interesting, then stick around and watch the rest of this video. Okay then, so let's start by looking at what caused all of this. Well, if you're an avid Reddit user, you may or may not have come across the subreddit known as Wall Street Bets, which was a small subreddit which describes itself as a community for making money and being amused whilst doing it. Or, more realistically, a place to come and upvote memes when your portfolio is down. So that's Wall Street Bets. Next up is GameStop. Pretty much all you need to know here is that GameStop is a US-based games retailer, which well, hasn't exactly been in their prime in recent years. Okay, so now that we're all on the same page, what exactly happened? Well, when the pandemic hit last year, many investors already saw GameStop as a failing business just waiting to go bust. This was made worse by the pandemic which stopped people from visiting in-person stores, like GameStop. So it's only natural that these already hesitant investors became even less confident in GameStop. Enter the idea of shorting. Shorting is something that many investors will do when they think a company is going to perform badly. In the most basic terms, this is when you borrow a stockbroker's stock and promise that you'll pay them back later. If you want to know more, there is an entire film dedicated to this concept called The Big Short, which I highly recommend you watch. It's actually one of my personal favourites. But if you want a bit more of an explanation, then here is a less technical example. That said, if you're already familiar with the concept of shorting, then you can go ahead and skip this section. Let's imagine that I think something is overpriced. Let's say graphics cards. So I go to Nvidia and I borrow a graphics card, promising that I will pay them back in the future. Nvidia likes this idea because they will get back their graphics card, plus I'll pay them a little bit of interest on top just so that it's worth their time. Now that I have this graphics card from Nvidia, I take it and I sell it to someone for £1,000. But then, let's say I was right, and the price goes plummeting down. Now the price of graphics cards is just £500. So I decide to buy two graphics cards, returning one of them to Nvidia and selling the other for a £500 profit. Now Nvidia have their graphics card back, and I've made £500 in profit. In stock market terms, I've just shorted graphics cards. So all you need to do is just replace graphics cards with stocks, and now you understand the concept of shorting. Hopefully you wrapped your head around that, but here's where things start to get interesting. If I borrow a graphics card from Nvidia and sell it to person A, and person B might come along and borrow that same graphics card from person A, and then sell it back to Nvidia. Now we're back at square one. Nvidia have their graphics card back, but I still owe Nvidia a graphics card, and person B still owes a graphics card to person A. This is an example of the short interest being higher than 100% of the available stock. We've got one item of stock, one's been returned, but two are still owed. This is an important concept to have your head around, so go back and rewatch that explanation if you still don't understand. I think that's enough of the technical explanation for this video. So let's cast our minds back to 2020 again, when the coronavirus first hit and GameStop stock fell below $4. This is when large hedge funds began to short GameStop stocks, assuming that it would collapse under the pressure of the coronavirus and decreasing popularity of brick and mortar shopping. This would have been a pretty safe and good plan, and a potential big money maker, if it wasn't for the fact that things didn't quite go as expected. Unfortunately for those hedge funds, GameStop didn't do as badly as first predicted, thanks to two big events. The one that you guys will be most familiar with is the release of the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5. Now, you might remember that Microsoft and GameStop actually managed to work out a deal to give GameStop a chunk of all Xbox digital revenues from consoles sold by GameStop. This ended up being a big revenue generator for GameStop, one that the hedge funds did not see coming. On top of that, in the summer of 2020, a man named Ryan Cohen, the founder of Chewy, an online digital retailer of pet food, decided to start buying up shares in GameStop, which resulted in his company owning millions of stocks and a total of 13% share in GameStop. 
Then in January, Ryan and other high profile members of the Chewy company were appointed to the board of GameStop. Now you might be wondering why this is all significant. Well, the reason is because having an industry giant who has great experience in online retail is exactly what GameStop needed to begin its serious push online and better compete with the likes of Amazon. So what exactly happened that made all of this so, well, non-routine? Over that period, when things started looking up for GameStop, the same companies that had shorted GameStop back in spring made the fatal decision to double down on their position and try to suppress the growing stock price by shorting the stock even further than they already had. Because let's remember, they want the stock price to fall so that they make money. In fact, on January the 11th, 2021, an additional 4 million short positions were taken, which happens to be the exact day that the high-profile Chewy board appointments were announced. That's not a coincidence. It was this surge in attempting to suppress the stock price by shorting that pushed the number of short positions to more than GameStop's float. GameStop has a float of just 69.75 million shares. However, there were more than 70 million short positions. Now remember from earlier though, you can actually have more short positions than there are shares. This is made even worse by the fact that a significant chunk in fact, roughly 20% of GameStop shares are actually owned by GameStop insiders, such as Ryan Cohen. And due to heavy regulation, they are unable to sell their shares easily, and so they're rarely available to purchase. And then in addition to that, an even larger chunk was held by large institutions such as BlackRock Inc, who rarely actively trade. So if you're still with me for all of that, that leaves just 30-ish million stocks which can be actively traded out of a potential 69.75 million stocks. That's less than half. But as we know from earlier, there are 71 million short positions which need to be filled, all of which need to buy the stocks in order to be able to return the stocks they borrowed and then sold. Now guys, the first thing you're taught in economics class is that when demand is high and supply is low, the price skyrockets. And well, that's exactly what the guys over at Wall Street Bets realized. So what Wall Street Bets collectively realized was that if they bought up any GameStop stock that they could get their hands on, they could hold on to it, reducing the amount of stock and making it harder for short position holders to back out. So by limiting the supply, Wall Street Bets drove up the price of GameStop stock, triggering what's known as a short squeeze, in which people with short positions desperately try to buy up stock to try and cut their losses before the price gets too high. Sure, they are losing money, but buying now prevents them from losing even more if the prices rise further. So now we're in the situation where people with short positions are trying to buy into the stock, increasing demand and driving up the price. Now you might be thinking, well, why don't they just wait? Surely the stock price might come back down. Well, don't forget what we talked about earlier you need to pay interest on your short positions. So by holding onto their shorts, they are having to pay interest, costing them even more money. So they definitely want to act fast. So like I said, the price began to rise and it became an absolutely mental increase. Considering that the price was below $4 in March last year, rose to $5 in September, then $40 in mid-January, but as of January the 28th, the day I'm recording this, it hit a high of almost $500. The long and short of it is the guys over at Reddit's Wall Street Bets made a hell of a lot of money, and the hedge funds that held the shorts lost even more. So why is the stock market so pissed off? Well, it's mostly for the reason I listed above. They lost a lot of money. But it also brings into question whether or not Reddit could do it again. Now, it's true that Reddit isn't exactly a goliath in the stocks and shares world, but nobody expected them to have the collective buying power to cause a short squeeze on GameStop like this. So could they do it again in the future? Well, this definitely isn't the first short squeeze in history, and it's unlikely to be the last. Question is, can Reddit cause it to happen again? On purpose? So what do you guys think about all of this? Did Reddit do the right thing by ruining the fun of hedge funds and making a crap ton of money? Or do you think this is likely to happen again? If so, to which company? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you like this video, be sure to leave a like to let me know. Also, uh, just a very quick late night update for you guys. Uh, I'm in the middle of editing this video and as it turns out, uh, they've actually restricted the trading of shares in GameStop. Uh, <laughs> so that's the latest development. We're now much more restricted in trading GameStop shares 
which is bringing this whole thing to a crashing end. The prices have dived about 55% since this uh, new policy has been brought in, so I think this might be the end of Reddit's fun. Sorry guys.